So uh, we have a good program today, and I've been asked to talk about uh, obstetric ultrasound. Um, so, which I, I gather it is mostly about scanning the back, uh, but if we get time, we can look at uh, gastric scanning as well. Um, so, I'm just going to not give more of a scientific lecture, it is more of a practical tips on how to go about doing um, back scanning and um, as you can see from the images that the technology is uh, rapidly improving and this is the latest, uh, uh, I think, Acuro 1 where which is, they've made it into a portable um, um, ultrasound device which has got some 3D guidance that will allow you to uh, find uh, the depth and the suitable space so which, which can be carried around in the pocket. So why do we need to scan the back? I mean, obviously I don't use it for everyone. Um, if they are obese or if they can't really feel the landmarks of the scarring in the back pre from previous surgery. Um, so, or, or I've used this look, listen and feel basically, I've tried to fit it into that. So listen, I mean not listen to the, to the patient's body or with an ultras uh, with a uh, stethoscope, I mean listen to the story behind that usually they say that they had a previous difficult spinal they've had multiple attempts and they couldn't get it or it was failed and they were put to uh, sleep uh, or if your colleague from next door calls you that they've had a difficult spinal can you come and help around um, so the first thing I look for is an ultrasound machine because it doesn't make any sense to do any more further blind attempts and the feel I mean is that if you really can't feel the dip in the middle line or if you feel that the spine is curved so that it, it's a bit scoliotic, then I don't really go for a blind attempt. I go look for the scan. So these are the only situations where this probably is useful, but I think to start with, if you scan routinely for all patients, you will, you will, it will take some time for your eyes and hands to pick up a, a regular routine so that you don't spend too much time on scanning. So there's two views, which probably once I go through this slide, because I've only got eight slides and then I'll just do a demo. Um, the, the main view is, is because we are already trained to do midline approaches. That's the one everybody seems to go for as a default option. So this is the view that you need to be familiarized yourself with, which is the transverse view, which is good for midline approach. Uh, basically we're trying to view the structures between the two spinous processes. Uh, so it is an interspinous midline approach. And we, we place the probe like as it is shown on the picture uh, in, in a transverse view. Uh, I don't know whether this pointer can point but I'm, I'm sure you can see it. So it's looking, the probe is, the ultrasound beam is looking between two spinous processes. Uh, and the structures that you see are a faint view of ligamentum flavum um, uh, there and two white lines which is the posterior dura and the anterior dura. On the sides you see the transverse process shadows, maybe a little bit of the articular process shadows. You see through all these structures because there is no spinous process or any bony structure in the, in the path of the ultrasound beam. So your beam is passing through just your ligaments and uh, intraspinous tissues to show the picture of ligamentum flavum and the dura. So that's one view. That's called as the bat swing sign. Um, the second view, which I, I personally very like very much, is the paramedian view, which I use very often in these difficult patients, and they are the ones who, uh, which will help in identifying in the difficult ones most of the time, except for the obese ones where a midline may be better. So here you're, you're putting a probe in a, in a sort of a paramedian um, position, which is just to the side of the midline. So you can have, do a right paramedian or a left paramedian. Me being a right-handed individual, I prefer mostly doing right paramedian, but if you're a left-handed person, you might prefer to be, look at the left paramedian or if the surgery is on the left side and you want to use a very small uh, amount of local anesthetic for your neuraxial blocks, then you may just do a left paramedian as well. 
So the right parameter is, is most of the time is adequate. And you're looking at each space, so from sacrum, and then you will look at uh, each space with uh, ligamentum flavum dura. I will do a live demo that will give a better picture than what is, what is shown in this particular slide. So here you are looking between two laminas, so it, it is interlaminar, so that's one lamina, so which is like a, like a horse's head, like horses lined up behind each other, uh, so it's like the horse's head, they are the lamina, and between the two lamina you see the ligamentum flavum and the dura, posterior and anterior dura, and it's a wider space. Interlaminar space is wider than midline. So the key objectives of scanning is I use a four-step, four-stage process. One is to identify the best space, which is the best space, or which are the best spaces. So I look for at least two, two to three, so that will give me two needle entry points for my best attempts. So I will tell you how to look for a best space, and then you have to remember how your probe was angled, so that is, will be the direction of your needle entry. And the third is the needle entry point, so you need to mark it. Once you've got the best view uh, and noted the angle, you need to mark it on the skin of the patient, so that will give you the entry point for your needle. And then once you've done that, then you look at the screen and, and measure the depth. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm going to do, uh, actually. That will be the key objective of this particular uh, talk. So you see that the spaces are variable in dimension in terms of the width and the length, you see, and uh, it looks wider in one left paramedian, maybe it's shorter uh, in, in the right paramedian. The midline is quite opened up. Uh, it can be very narrow sometimes. So we are going to identify the best interspace. What do, you, what do I mean by best interspace? Best interspace is where you, when you can see the posterior dura and the anterior dura and the ligamentum flavor, all of it. If you just see one white line, not the other one, maybe that's not a good space. In the same way, in the paramedian view, you need to see the posterior dura and the anterior dura complex. If you can see the ligamentum flavum, that's a bonus. Yeah? So if you get an image like that, and if it is wider, then that is the best. That is what I define as a best space. It is nothing documented in the, lit in the literature as such a term, I'm, I've coined it myself, so that is what I call it as a best space. So if, if you, you can even grade it like your, um, your comet line or a difficult intubation thing, grade one, grade two, grade three. So if you can see one thing, maybe you can say grade one, grade two, but I have not gone to that stage yet. At the moment, I'm just defining them as both duras are well defined and the ligament and flavum. And if it is a wide space, that, that is what I, I mean by best space. So you need to choose a space. Uh, when, I, when I say best space, it has to be in a safe level. You're not going above L2. So you have to choose between L2, L3, L3, L4, L4, L5, or L5, S1. So you've got the option of four interspaces. So you need to choose one of them. So that's what is the best interspace. So when you find something like that, you hold the probe like that. Don't move your probe and register in your mind what is the angle of the probe. Is it pointing towards the midline or is it away from the midline or is it completely perpendicular? Remember that, whether you put the probe in the paramedian view or in the transverse view, just remember the angle of the probe because your needle is going to pass in that angle. The third bit is, so you remember the angle, you just keep the probe in the same place, don't move it because you have identified the best space You've got a good view, you've noted the angle, now keep the probe and try and mark that spot. So the way I do it is just I encircle my fingers around the probe so that it is, your fingers are exactly at the middle of the probe and then I take my probe off, leave the fingers and then just mark the middle of uh, the intersection. I do this just to save time instead of putting lots of dots and lines over the patient's back. I find this very, very reliable, and I've been using it for years now, uh, and, and, and they give me, they've been very useful, um, simple tip, and I just, just take something that allows me to mark it. So, and then I move on to the next best interest space, and then do the same marking again. So I just repeat, and I do like two or three markings, 
Usually two is enough, but in the difficult ones, it is better to mark three just in case. So, so when you get that, when you marked it, before you take the probe out, ask somebody to freeze that screen because your next step is to measure the depth. For that, you need to have a frozen screen on your ultrasound picture. So ask somebody to freeze the image, and then you put the probe, take your hands off the patient, you've done all the marking. Now you go around to the ultrasound machine, put the calipers on, and mark the depth from the skin to the target structure. Is it the ligamentum flavum, or is it the dura that you're interested in, and mark it. Do the same for whether it is a paramedian view or a midline view. So once you have marked it, you roughly know what is the depth. Say, for example, it is six centimeter. You give an allowance of another half or a centimeter for, because your probe is applied with a lot of pressure. So you're squashing the tissues. But when you take off the probe, that they, they just bounce back. So you need to add a little bit of um, leeway there. And you will put some local infiltration as well. So add another half or a centimeter to it. Say, for example, if I get a depth of six centimeter and I add a, another centimeter to it, basically I need a longer needle. I can't really use the standard spinal needle. So it also gives me an indication whether I should take a standard size needle or an extra long needle. So anything more than six centimeter depth, I would go for an extra long needle. So I just don't waste time taking, prodding around with a smaller needle. So that's, that's all. These are the four steps. That's what I'm going to demonstrate on to you. So if you remember the band, which is B is for best space, A is angle of the probe, N is the needle entry point has to be marked, and D is the depth. That's all we're going to do in the demo. OK? I'll just put the image as a reference point for you. Yeah, you sit there. So, everyone see that TV with the ultrasound image? Yeah? Yeah. Good. How many of you already do this routinely? One? <coughs> Okay, how many of you have tried? Okay, were you able to see what you want to see? Sort of. Yeah. Has it made your attempt more successful or you just wanted to have a go at it or just, is there any experience that you want to share? Have you used it? Okay. Is it frozen or is it working? Uh, it should be working. Ah, oh, it, 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 I've connected to uh, Tasmanian friends. Do you want it on muscular screen first? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I reduce the depth a little bit. Fine. Maybe need to see that. Is that a little bit invisible for this? So you position the patient as you would normally uh, do for your procedure, so they're relaxed. Um, and you start with the paramedian view from the bottom. Yeah. So my finger is there. That will be towards the head. I try and visualize the sacrum first. Can we increase the depth a little bit, please? So look at my probe is just on the right paramedian. I look for the sacrum, and I look for the first space, which is L5-L1-S1. And I can see a good view of, can you hear me? Is everybody happy to see? Yeah, I mean, if you want, you can come down and have yeah. that much to help you. Uh, so f we're seeing the first uh, interlaminar space, which is L5-S1. Uh, and I'm looking, I'm looking for those definitions that I said earlier, which is, I want to see the posterior and the anterior dura. Jonah has got a very good view of the dura. You can, you can see it very, very nicely. Um, 
So that's L5 S1. Then I just go higher up, look for L4 L5. And again, I c he's got a very good interlaminar space, L4 L5. Then I go further up. So that's L3 L4. That's sort of OK, I would say. But his L4 L5 and L5 S1 are better because they're wider. So this is slightly narrow, L3 L4. You go slightly higher up. And that's his L2, L3, which is not so good. So his lower spaces are better. So, so you don't want to go any higher than L2, L3. So what you can do is you can just put a mark here. So just to remind yourself, I don't normally do that, but you can do that. Just to remind yourself, I don't want to go any higher than that. So I need to put it either below L2, L3. So when I reach that point, then what I do is that so this is my preliminary scanning. Before I'm, I'm just doing a quick survey before I pick up the best interspaces. Okay? So I then I scan down now in the transverse view. I've turned my probe in the transverse view. I start from L2, L3 because that's where I've reached so far. And then look for midline. See, I see the posterior and anterior dura. Can you uh, increase the gain, please? So it's, it's, a, it's a good space, actually, in the midline. Um, but we know that it is a narrow window from the paramedian view, but it is reasonably good. The reason why you're seeing your posterior and anterior dura so bright white reflections are because what is inside the, the, those two dural layers is CSF. So it's fluid there. So when there is a fluid tissue interface, it, it just really enhances the view of the dura. So the dura looks really bright and uh, illuminating. Whereas the ligamentum flavum is a tissue. Uh, he's got quite a thick ligamentum flavum, uh, but it is a very, very faint, uh, hazy, grayish structure. So we'll go down from L2, L3. Now I'm on the spinous process, so I, don't s I, I shouldn't see anything, so I'm not seeing anything. I walk down to the next interspace, which is L3, L4. See, this interspace in the midline view is not as clear as the previous one. And again, if, I, if I'm getting an image like that, I always try to balance it to bring it to the midline. If it, for a scoliotic patient, it'll, it'll look something like that. What you have to do is you have to move your probe in such a way to bring it to the midline so that the dura is, is, is well visualized. That'll give an indication of which direction you need to go in a scoliotic patient. So if you get like this, you can either mark it like that and then go in that angle, or you can just bring it to the best view possible and then mark it. I always bring it to this best position before <coughs> I mark it. So that space is not good. I already have had a look. Go for L4, L5, middle line. Sort of OK, not happy still. So look for L5, S1. Not so great. So I know already that the L2, L3 is the best one for him, midline. Paramedian, L4, L5, and L5, S1 are the best ones. Uh, so what I do is now I go back, get the same view, because I like the L4, L5. Uh, bring it to the middle of the screen, so the target is in the middle of the screen. And then put my finger around, ask him to freeze. Can you freeze that image, please? Yeah. So I've frozen. I note the angle of the probe. The angle is just slightly towards the midline. Put encircle my fingers around the middle of the probe. Yeah. So do you can only look one side, the other side, because your brain is working in 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 a coordinated fashion. If you put a finger on the other side, it'll always be exactly at the same uh, midpoint. So you place your fingers like that. Take your probe off. Have some back of the needle hub or. Uh, anything that will leave a little indentation mark on the skin, and I mark the midpoint of between my two fingers. I can see it. Mark it. Okay? And that's it. Done. So now I go to the caliper. There is a caliper option. Can you just show Jono? So the caliper will be from the skin, directly perpendicular to the dura, posterior dura, and it shows on the top right, left hand corner. It is 4.89, so 4.9. So, so
So phi, say let us say it is about five centimeter, you add a, another half a centimeter of one. So he should be fine for the standard needle. Uh, we have marked the spot, all you have to do is pass the needle with a slight five degree tilt towards the midline and you will hit the dura. Spot on. That's a paramedian, yeah. I, 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 because I wanted to go through the step. Now I'll show you the midline. So that's paramedian because that was the best space that I liked in, in him. Uh, so, I, so once I mark one, I go and mark the second one. That's what I'm going to do now, yeah. And because it is teaching, we are taking so much time, but in real life, uh, it will be very quick. This is the space I really liked, the L2, L3, because I could see the dura nicely. Um, ask him to free, uh, wait. Yeah, freeze. So this is, you see the angle of the probe is slightly pointing upwards. It's not completely perpendicular. So take my finger off and then mark the middle of that point. Yeah? Um, and then he'll measure the depth. So I've marked two spots, one here, one here. So once I mark these two spots, wipe off the gel, go and get yourself dressed up. And then that's your first attempt and that's your second attempt. So when you get, when you go and hit it, and if, you, if, you, if you're so unlucky that you manage to touch the bone, don't lose your heart. Maybe it is just a slight tilt that you were on either side because it is quite a wide space. Midline, there is, you won't have that problem very much if you have gone through that exact line. But that is about 4.99. So you see that paramedian was 4.89. This was 4.99 because the midline can be sometimes, because of the spinous process projecting out, can be more deeper. Uh, uh, entry, whereas a paramedian that may he because he's so thin there is a groove there, so it is a shorter distance paramedian. Uh, there can be a centimeter difference between paramedian and uh, midline. So, so if you if you follow that kind of uh, in a stepwise approach, um, in a difficult patient mark three spots, but in a if if there is a good view there, I usually stop at two, I mark two spots. But if it's a really really difficult view, sometimes just take the uh, freeze off. In, in a really big obese BMI of 45, you all, all, uh, the midline is one will help you. You, will, you may not see the dura, but you will see the, the, uh, the laminar articular processes, and it will look something like, like this. Yeah? So even if, if you see something like this, that's a good sign because you're not seeing this. So you know that there is some, we are, there is some window there. So mark just that window. All you don't know is that you can get an approximate depth. Say, for example, depth is about 6.5 or 7. That doesn't matter. It only helps you select the right needle. Um, but all you can identify that we are not going to hit the spinous process or a bone. There's clearly a, a, a space, intraspinous space, uh, which allows the ultrasound beam to pass through. But I'm not able to see the ligamentum flavum or dura. But to, it doesn't matter. You get, you get, at least you're not seeing the bone in the view. In the view. So there is some, some space there. So you, that's, that's what you will see like in a very, very, very obese bariatric patient. Uh, but that's good. That's a good thing.